It's going to be Thursday the 4th and Friday the 5th of June. You're going to be learning to apply your persuasive writing features when writing a leaflet. And you could either choose to do it as a side of A4, or you could do a trifold, a threefold leaflet like I am, and I'm going to show you when I do my modelling. But if you wanted to just do it as an A4 side of paper, you could do it that way as well. So yesterday you came up with headings for your leaflet and four or five subheadings. And so what you're going to do is you're going to be using those when you're doing your writing and underneath each subheading, you're going to inject short paragraphs full of a forest of persuasive features. So really thinking back to the acronym that we've been looking at, thinking back to making sure you use a forest of persuasive features in your writing. So thinking about alliteration, those words that start with the same sound, facts, truthful statements, opinion, things that you think, rhetorical questions to engage your reader, hopefully you'll have those with your subheadings already, emotive language, try and really pull on the heartstrings of your reader, try and get some sort of emotional response out of them, statistics, numerical facts, which might include fractions or percentages, and three, the rule of three, listing three things together to really punch home your message. How to write, how much to write. So less is more in this instance, in this type of text. So every word has to count, every word has to be important. We don't want to overwhelm the reader with dense passages. It is something to draw somebody in and get them engaged and get them looking. The writing should be short, but really, really focused. And remembering to leave spaces for pictures too, to draw your reader in. You might want to, if you're doing this on the computer, you could do some cutting and pasting. You could use photos you've taken. So you could go and take photographs of your kitchen or your bedroom or your front of your house or your garden or whatever it might be, or your local area. and then in, put them straight into your leaflet if you're working on a computer. If you're doing it on paper, you could, um, you could do some cutting as well. You could go and um, see if there's any um, property pages outside any of the, the estate agents, which might be open again now. And you could cut out images from that, or you could use um, your own drawings, which would be even better. So here's an example I've quickly put together. So I've got my trifold. So I've got this divided into three different sections and I'm gonna provide a template for you of a trifold um, leaflet on the website. So that's there for you to download and use. Here I've got a, a, an image space and I've just put a very simple picture. Yours will obviously be much, much better than that. And then I've got my alliterative heading here. Then when the, you open it up, I've got my rhetorical question starting us off. Did you crave a paddling pool while on lockdown? In this delightful dwelling is a garden which oozes fun and an air of relaxation. We are sure that if you, would, if you weren't to spend lockdown here, you would regret it for years to come, maybe even a lifetime. With a paddling pool larger than your bath, there is space to play and keep clean. Why not throw in some bubble bath and make it an al fresco bath time? So it's, I've got some uh, emotive language in there. I've got a fact in there, paddling pool larger than your bath. I've got some of those magpie phrases that I um, liked yesterday, oozes, that word I really liked. Um, and I'm hopefully keeping it not too long, that paragraph. And then I've got a picture. If it was yours, obviously you'd get a much better picture. I just got some clip art of a paddling pool there. My next paragraph, who wouldn't want to spend lockdown living here? And then I've got some bullet points here. Because it's a leaflet and they're just looking for short, punchy sentences, you don't have to even use full sentences in some parts, but you could use phrases. So here I've decided instead of doing full sentences to do bullet points. 
I would only do this for one section if you're going to do it. And then I finished off the section with a little paragraph, a little couple of sentences at the end with some statistics in. So who wouldn't want to spend lockdown living here? Coffee and tea making facilities, a state of the art microwave which can reheat beverages in under two minutes, a sumptuous sofa, bookshelves collapsing under the weight of so many incredible pages of escapism. 100% of current adult residents agree the tea and coffee provided is beyond excellent. And 80% of all household residents find the books on offer incredible. Please note that 20% of this household is canine. So I've just put in a little um, example of there of how you can put some percentages and statistics in to your um, writing. So you could talk about the how many of your household think a certain thing or, or um, have said a certain thing. And remember, it's a fictional piece, so you don't have to go and interview everybody in your house or your local area. Um, super. So hopefully you've got lots and lots of ideas from the last few days to, to start with. Um, what I'm going to talk about quickly before I send you off to write is the back, the reverse side. So you could either continue writing if you haven't got enough space on the front, or if you end up with some extra space on the back, you could maybe do a floor plan. So this is a bit like a map of your home. If you take the roof off your house and you look down from above, what would you see? And then you can use that to label all the rooms or show where the really great parts that you talked about are. So a bit like this one. So it's got a floor plan and then it's got some of these um, labels just to talk about the different spaces. So pointing at the kitchen, love baking during lockdown. This kitchen is overflowing with state-of-the-art baking products. This is where you can enjoy a luxury, uh, a luxurious extra, bub extra bubbly bath. Um, dens can be built under the big bed, kids only zone with pillow fights and pic uh, putting your own pictures on the wall. So just a, an idea of what you could do on the back if you had some extra space. You might not need to use the whole back for it. Maybe you could use one section to carry on with your writing or two sections to carry on with your writing and just do the, the um, floor plan in the third section. Um, and then I've also put on for you is a success criteria to really make sure you are thinking about and trying to include all of those um, persuasive features in your writing. Have you got a statistic in there at the end? Have you got some emotive language in there? If you want to do a draft and then a best copy, brilliant. If you want to write your paragraphs down on a piece of paper and edit them and make them really good before you copy them onto your best product leaflet, then that's even, that's a really wonderful idea. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some pictures of these. And hopefully you produce something you're really, really proud of at the end. So you've got two English sessions. So when you're doing your home learning, two sessions to really finalise this. And tomorrow we will also be having our spelling test. So on those on Monday, you're given some spellings. Hopefully you've been practising your handwriting. You've been practising those spellings because tomorrow is the spelling test. Super. I look forward to seeing your finished pieces. Brilliant.